Oh, hi, it's Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades and we're gonna do a quick thrift haul and I'm going to try and get some of this painted up all in the same video so it's not two separate things because we've got a huge snowstorm coming and I'm probably gonna be locked out of my shop for a while. So I'm hoping to get some stuff done at home and then maybe we'll get all this so I don't get put behind by the weather. Okay, so I actually got a lot of things this week that did not need anything done to them, which is kind of awesome. Um, not for a creative standpoint, but from a selling standpoint. So number one, I paid more for this than I wanted to. I didn't look it up while I was at the thrift store. I just loved it. And if it doesn't sell, I won't be sad about it because it's incredible. It was $16, which is, I mean, I would never pay $16 for something to sell typically, but I think it's so pretty. It's just beautiful. And then when I looked it up, they're actually going for $70 on Etsy. So I'm like, well, that's not bad. Um, yeah, so it's stamped. It's, uh, it's Van Berg and it's quadruple plated. Um, so I'll probably list it at 50 just because I feel like 70 is a bit much, but, um, yeah, I just, I think it's just stunning with all of the things all over it. All right. This frame I got for $1.99. I only got it cause it's just plasticky and it's missing the back like prop piece it still hangs it has the hanging hardware so that's just what I'll use it for which it would be great for a gallery wall anyways but I'm gonna do the new technique I've been doing where it has the gold underneath and then the colored wash over the top the like very kind of old rustic-y French look man I'm just in love with that and I think I want to go kind of a taupey pewter this week so we'll see we'll see how this one turns out but I'm excited I just loved all the detail on this it was only two bucks It'll still hang perfectly. It's in really good shape aside from just missing its little back bracket there. Um, and then this one I think I have marked as 12. Yep, so it'll be $12 once it's finished. These two deals, you guys know I always pick up these little copper molds. These ones are more on the rose gold side of things. Um, they were three bucks each. They'll go for eight on the website. My copper stuff usually goes pretty quickly. Um, usually a little faster if it's the like more copper colored ones, but I like the shape of these ones. So I picked them up anyways. I picked up this sweet little heart dish. It's just like a creamy white colored ceramic uh, for Valentine's day, obviously. And it has like the little roses that are actually done in there. It's just super cute. Made in Italy. I want to say, yeah, this one will be 12 because it's a fairly decent size. So it can be like a little trinket dish, nut dish, soap dish, you know, all the dishes. I grabbed this just because it's a 99 cent bag of little wooden knobs. These little knobs I wouldn't use for furniture. You guys know I'm not a huge fan of wooden knobs on furniture. However, these do work great for legs when you want to put them on like risers and stuff. So I picked these up just for that. This guy was 79 cents. It's just a little candle snuffer, um, pewter. It's lovely. I love candle snuffers. I think they're super cool. Um, this one's cast, so it doesn't have the little twisty head. So I have this one up for $8. This guy here I picked up just because, you know, I love the dome lids on things. So this is just a galvanized cake stand with the dome lid, cloche, whatever you want to call it. Um, just super cute, small. It's a sweet little thing. Um, and I want to say I have this one for 16. And that's mostly because shipping is going to be a pain. Um, in person, I'd probably sell this for like 10. What did I pick it up for? Oh, it originally sells for $25. I got it for six. So it probably wasn't the best buy. I just liked it, so I picked it up. This little basket, it's just cute. It's 
kind of square shaped squobal almost. Um, it's in really good condition. I thought it'd be perfect to put florals in or a good gathering basket. It's just, it's really sweet. And this will go for 16. Again, mostly because of shipping. These things are awkward to ship and you have to get enough space around them because you don't want it to get damaged in shipping. So anything larger like this that's more fragile, I'm always terrified of shipping. You know, shipping companies, they just, they just hug your boxes. I'll write like fragile on them 87 times around the side and the top. I'm so paranoid about it now. This guy, you know I picked up that wheat. It still hasn't sold, but I still love it. And I couldn't pass up this rose. Valentine's Day is coming up. It has a little dust in here, so I'm gonna have to get that cleaned up. This was, it was only $1.49, so I was like, sure, why not? And I think I have it, yeah, it's listed for 12. But it's so cute. And it does have a little hanging bracket on the back there. So it can be hung, but I just think it's sweet sitting in something or even in a vase would be cool. I don't know, I just really like these metal sculpted deals. I was super excited to find these. I've actually sold these before, but the other ones were quite a bit larger. Um, these ones I'd say are like a mid-size, but they're just like little resin corbel shelves. They've got the hanging brackets on the back. And I don't hate the paint here, but I do hate it here. And they're the exact same as they were on the larger ones. Um, so they'll probably get a paint job and they'll probably get the same thing where I let the gold shine through and do the wash over the top just because, like I said, I like that. And I really want to try these in taupe too. I would, if it wasn't for this right here, I'd probably just keep it, but this is hideous. Anyways, these were $3.99 each. So $8 and they'll go for 30 on the website. And especially if you can find pairs to corbels and like little matching shelves and stuff, those always sell really well for me and pretty quickly. So if you see them, they're a good buy. I mean, obviously I picked this up and I, it was only $6.99, which I don't know. I think it is so pretty. It's silver plated. It's a Godinger jewelry box. It's got all the things in here. It needs to be dusted a little bit. And of course the thrift store put the little tag through the velvet right here, which is kind of annoying, but what can you do? So it's just, it's in really good condition and it's beautiful. I mean, just stunning all the way around. So what I say, that one was $6.99 and this is $30 on the website. And that's an easy shipper too. It's in good shape. It'll be safe to ship. It's just, it's good stuff. This was $5, um, a little mortar and pestle, hand turned. It's beautiful. I love it so much. Um, you can fit quite a bit in there too. Yeah, I think it's super cool. What do I have this one for? 16. So still relatively low. I didn't make, I mean, I won't make a ton of profit on this, but I just, I love mortar and pestles. So that's why, that's why I got it. And if it doesn't sell, darn, it won't be sad. Have you guys noticed that I just really like kitchen stuff? These were $1.99, a really, I mean, I thought they were a good price considering it's six of these coasters and they have like the old school, like metal tile look, like the antique metal tiles. They are a rose gold coppery color with the glass over the top and they have the black felt bottoms. So I just thought these were really pretty and it's a set of six. So I picked those up and those will go for I think 12. I could be wrong. I'm having trouble finding it on my list of things. This I just picked up because it's huge and stunning. I mean, I really, I only picked it up for the price or for the look of it, the size and all of the gorgeous. I mean, even the bottom is like pressed. You can see stuff in there. Well, it's reflecting, so it's hard to see but it just has cool stuff in here. And oh man, it's so lovely. It's 
heavy. It's like pewterish. I don't know, but it's from the F.B. Rogers Silver Co. Yeah, I, I mean, it's silver in color. It's not silver plated unless somebody spray painted it and that's why it's this. I don't know, but I think it is super pretty. It just reminds me of pewter. And like I said, it's heavy, heavy, good stuff. So I picked it up. Um, and then when I looked up the brand and the name and everything, and they actually go for a pretty good price. There was none exactly like this one. So I marked it as $40 um, and they go for way higher than that on online when I was looking at them. So, and it, it shouldn't be too terrible to ship. I mean, it's heavy, but it's, you know, long and thin. Um, picked up some more hardware because it was four bucks. It's just some old ones. I just like having them in stock if I find them at the thrift store and it's something that I feel like I would use on one of my older pieces. I will do that. This looks like a vintage inspired watering can. I don't hate it how it is. It is very springy. Um, so I actually like what it is now. But if it doesn't sell for the spring, I might go ahead and just paint it and do something fun on it. And that will just kind of be where I go with it, but it's metal. It's, it's actually decoupaged. It's painted and decoupaged. Interesting. I don't know. Maybe I'll end up painting it, but it's very sweet. It's a little watering can or it, on the website. I have it. Um, I have florals in it just so that you can see what that looks like. And I think that's for $20 just because it will be, it's a larger item to ship. Last but not least is this giant cutting board. It's fairly thin. It has kind of like the pizza peel edge, but it's not a peel. It just has it all the way around. Um, this was $5, which is a good buy for such a nice piece of wood. Um, but yeah, I'll probably do some wood burning on this. And then I don't have it on the website because I don't know exactly. It depends on how much work will go into it. So it'll be anywhere from 20 to $40 by the time it's finished. So there's no way for me to tell before I've started it. Okay, that's it for the thrift haul. Now we can get into doing fun things. So I'll see you on the other side of this. Just kidding, I have one more and this one is really, really, really cool. It's a vintage nut bowl, tray, dish, whatever you wanna call it. Um, obviously I'm gonna clean it up because it has scratches and stuff on it. But how cool is that? It has like the metal ends on either side of the hammer and in here, so you fill with nuts and then you can crack them all. So cute. I love it. So I'm gonna clean this up. And these actually go for a decent amount as well. I wanna say that will be 30 on the website, 40. I can't remember, I just put my pad away. Anyways, I just wanted to show you because it's so cool. All right, we're starting these things off like we always do with a good cleaning. Um, and then any pieces that need a light scuff sand, we'll also get that. These actually didn't really need a scuff sand because of how I was doing them and none of them had a super slick surface with the, with the exception of that frame. But again, because of the way I was doing the frame, I didn't want to scuff sand it. Now, because I wanted to use taupe, um, I haven't found any taupes that are pre-bottled that I absolutely adore. So I always mix mine up, which is no big deal. I almost always just start with a base of brown and gray mixed together until it's around about the shade that I like. And then I will tone it with purple, blue, red, depending on 
you know, the degree that I want. And then I can also make it lighter with white if I need to go that route too. So I just kind of keep going until I like it. And I just make sure that I have enough to use on the entirety of my project. And of course, we're just going to go in with the first coat um, on everything that needs the taupe. I did this a little bit thinner because I want to be able to back it off of the frame. So that's just a personal preference. And I almost always use these artist brushes for this because most of the stuff that I like painting has quite a bit of detail. And they just fit down inside the little cracks and crevices better than, say, one of my larger furniture brushes that I typically use. So I kind of have my sets of brushes for different applications. Now the paint down here is drying really fast because I have a wood stove going right next to me. Um, so I don't want to let this frame sit too long before I wipe it back over the high points. So I'm just taking a rag, I'm getting it a little bit wet, and you can still see it's a little bit shiny down in the recesses. That's fine, I'm just going over the high points so that I don't have to work really hard to pull the paint off the top to let that gold shine through. This is again the first coat, it's going to get it in another coat as well but if I wait and do it on the second coat again I'll have to work harder to get it off on the second coat so it's just easier to go through take it off on the high points on the first coat and then do it again on the second. because I still have some of the blue left over from the bed, which sold by the way. I couldn't believe how fast it actually sold once I actually listed that thing. I had several people contact me about coming to get it. I'm like, well, this is great. I just need to do more French style beds apparently. Um, but anyways, like I said, I had extra of this blue left over and I love it. It's beautiful. I don't want it to go to waste. So I'm just using it on the watering can, which I did end up deciding to paint because I didn't realize that they had just glued paper around um that's what happens when I don't look very close I just get excited about the shape of something and don't pay attention but it's fine this still is a really cute little watering can and then if you'll remember a while ago I picked up an older 
like a vintage frame with a print inside and I hadn't decided what I was going to do with it. Well, I was like, this is the perfect opportunity. So we'll go blue on that as well. And then on the frame, since it does have the metallic detailing underneath, I'm going to do the same thing in where I leave it a little bit wet and I'll go back in with the rag and kind of pull through the metallics. Mind you, the metallics aren't as strong as this because this is a really old frame, but that's fine. I kind of want this one to look chippy and old. So I will also distress back some of this paint in different areas to let that pop through. And then as far as the canvas at this point goes, you can kind of see that little strip of canvas that's in there. I wasn't sure how it would look if I left the canvas or if I needed to do something with it. So at this point, I'm just leaving it and then I'll figure out what to do with it once I get all the colors on and decide what's going to look the best. And again, you can see why I love these little brushes. This one here has the pointed tip and it lets me get really, really close and inside everything without getting paint everywhere. So again, here I am just taking that rag and pulling back all of the high points and then also going through and distressing anywhere that I want that to pop through. So I did it along the edges as well because the edges actually had a uh, copper underneath. So this was a mixture of like golds and coppers, a couple different golds and one color of copper. So it had like a multi-metal hue going on and I still wanted to keep that, but I just didn't want it to be so kind of in your face about it. And I just worked through these in layers. So while the taupe sets were drying, then the blue sets could be drying and I could start working on the second round of the taupe as well. So that's all this is, speeding through, just getting the second round of taupe on these guys. And of course, while it's still wet, going back in with the rag and wiping off the high points. So the two corbels did get a second coat, but I, you know, it gets boring watching that same thing. So there you go, real quick flash of it. And then I'm just gonna go in, this is a chip brush and I'm taking a tiny, tiny bit of white paint and I'm just going to hit the high points of this, do a little dry brushing. That's just to bring out those details and then I'm gonna add some metallics later, but I wanna make sure that I get this on there and really make those pop because they're gorgeous. And then as far as the top goes, I wait until I have most of the paint off and then I'll dry brush over the top because I don't mind that it hits a little harder on all of these details, but on the tops, I don't want it to look like a crazy ma mass of like dry brushing on a flat surface. So I'll get as much off as I can on all these, like I said, the high points and the details. And then I can go through the very top and just kind of swoosh back and forth. So it gets a little bit of the color, but you don't have those huge dry brushing streaks that you get on flat surfaces. Now going back to the frame, I'm actually turning the white 
on the same chip brush, same white and everything, I'm just dipping it into the cup of water and I'm doing a light wash. Now this is mostly water. It is hardly any paint for this look because I don't want it to be overpowering. I just want it to have that kind of aged look. And this looks incredible. I love this frame so much now. I think it is just gorgeous. So like I said, I just dipped the brush in water, re-dipped it back in the little bit of paint that was in the lid. This is not a crazy amount. I'm not mixing anything up. I'm sticking it on there and then just blotting it back with the rag and that's it. Here I'm just going in with some gilding wax. This is white gold. It is a lovely color. However, it is not standing out as much as I want it to for this tone on these things. And I don't have the other one because it is at my shop, which I cannot get to. So that's a little bit frustrating, but it's all right. We're going to work with it and do something else a little bit later. Now back to the frame, I did decide that once I had the blue around the frame and there's quite a bit of this soft blue inside the painting, that I'm just going to do a wash of this around on the canvas. And I'm doing the wash the exact same way as I did before, is I just added water to the brush, dipped it in the small amount of paint that I had in the lid, and I'm just going around it. This isn't soaking wet, I don't want it to mess anything up, so it's just very lightly washing around this canvas. Now because this has the really bright gold around the inner portion of the frame, I'm going to go in with, this is as close of gold as I could manage considering the ordeal and it actually turned out really really well so this gold I just get a little bit wet and it reactivates it and then you can either paint it on or you can use it as a gilding wax either way and as I said earlier some of these high points that I was trying to get the metallics to come through was already rubbed off because it was a pretty old frame I'm just adding a tiny bit back in Now this part I just gotta have fun with. All I did was take like the smallest detail brush ever and I have like a little palette next to me and I mixed up highlight colors. And that's all that I'm doing is going in and making this pop a little bit. It just, because over time, it just seemed very flat to me when I looked at it. And especially since we're zhuzhing up the frame, I wanted to make sure that the picture still stood out because it's a lovely picture. It's just a print. This isn't a painting. I'm not maiming anything special, but it just made such a difference to have those tiny little details pop out like that. And then I'm just finishing everything up with a coat of wax to get it all sealed. And after getting these things waxed up, I realized, yeah, I just needed something a little bit bolder on there. So I took some of the brighter yellow gold and just hit less than where I hit with the white gold. So you can still see the white gold on here. You can still see all of the dry brushing. This just, I added a smaller amount in select sections and then I buffed it with my finger a little bit so it didn't look like it was painted on and it looked like it had been living there for a bit and just went around to both of them because I think it needed the contrast. All 
Oh, hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades and we've got some finished pieces and this was just an interesting week. We had a huge, huge storm move in. Everything has been frozen for days. My husband's car got smashed. Just oh, like a whole tree fell on it. It has been unpleasant. So I'm really glad that I knew it was coming and I brought the stuff home. I'm obviously working in the basement. So things aren't exactly perfect. Like these, I actually love, I think they turned out beautifully, but they're not quite as blingy as I would like. Not blingy, but just not quite, the gold isn't quite as bright. But that's really the only thing that I think would have changed on these. The picture, I've completely done like the full on base, but I don't have stencils or anything like that to put a something on it. So it's blank for now, because I can't get to my shop to get anything else. Now this frame turned out marvelously, but of course I don't have how I showed you guys that I put fun stuff inside here. Um, so I just have the original inside picture, which I think looks terrible inside it, but the frame itself is gorgeous. So I'm very pleased with that. And of course, all the other things that you saw at the beginning of this video. Um, some have already sold, which is great. Thank you guys so much. I had two orders go out and it was on a night that I could still drive out. And so I got both those orders packed and then I had to do a pickup delivery. So they're in the mail. They aren't delayed. They should be arriving to their prospective buyers. So thank you guys so much for ordering from my shop. I really appreciate it so much, way more than you know. I haven't had a chance to do this because all of my sandpaper is at the shop. So I'm a little bit delayed, but we do have some beautiful pieces and things that are photographed. These are going to get photographed momentarily. And just thank you for being here. You guys are incredible and I'll see you next time.